Hey everybody, Sean Holsinger here from HolsingersFlyShop.com. Bringing you an ancient old pattern, at least as far as fly fishing goes, um, it's the cow dung. This is an old pattern that's been around, it's been published in books clear back into the 1600s. So, um, like anything that's been around that long, there's going to be many variations of it, and this is just another variation of it. I'm definitely not using the original materials that was called for way back in the 1600s. Um, one thing I'm going to switch up is the wing material. Most of the originals you're going to see use turkey wings. Uh, there's a chance, probably a good chance, you don't have turkey wings laying around your fly bench, but you may have mallard. And uh, I'm just going to use, this is medium done mallard wings, and I'm going to use some of them. It, it makes just as nice of a pattern and probably would work a little bit better for a blue winged olive if you tied it smaller. Um, what's important is that you have one wing from each side, so you have a match set. And we're going to cut off the same side. And here you're going to see a little video right here uh, while I'm talking on how I cut them off. Uh, you're going to see I have my hackle pliers here and I have a hook that's the same size as what I'm using. And I'm going to put that hook into one of the sides of the mallard feather. And I'm going to use the, uh, the hook gap to separate the right size of wing. I'm going to pull that piece apart, snip it off, and that's how we're going to cut our wing size out. Now you're going to see there that the feather, when you cut it off, it's going to have a natural curl to it. Just like the wing feather does, it's going to have that bow to it. We're going to put the two bows that bow away from each other, we're going to put them together just like that. And so when we press them together, they're going to stick together. They're not going to flare apart at the tips. We don't want them to flare apart. We want the tips to come together. Um, so that's pretty much the simple way to get into it, explaining how I do the wings. You're going to see how I tie them down here in the video. Um, cool pattern, old pattern, and it's been catching fish for years. So here you see a picture of it, then the material is to tie it. Okay, here you see the cow dung in the vise, and uh, this was pretty close to the original. I'm going to do a little couple of variations on it, um, just to give you some options. Start out with the hook. We're going to use a Daiichi 1560. This is a size 12 in the vise here. The one I just showed you was a 14. I like the 14s better, 14 16s, but this 12 will show up better on the video. For thread, I'm using some Semperfly Nano Silk 12 watt black, um, 70 denier black, UTC if you want, same thing. And I'm just going to wrap that back right above the point of the hook. Next thing I'm going to put on is some, um, this is small, but you could use medium um, gold tinsel. And it's two sided, one side is silver, one side is gold. Just going to tie that on the middle of the hook there. And I'm going to wrap it back right above the bend, or sorry, right above the point. You see when my thread hangs down, it goes right over the point there. So I want to wrap that back that far, and we're going to start wrapping this gold tinsel back, and I'm going to wrap it back to the bend. Once I get it back to the bend, then I'm just going to wrap it back forward. So you just get nice, good, even coverage here, and you get a nice gold tail on the back. And we're going to bring our thread back there and tie that off right above that hook point. Okay, now, if I was tying the original pattern, I would cut this off. But I'm going to show you, I'm going to just take, fold this back, fold that back over, and we're just going to put a gold rib on it just to give it a little extra flash. Next thing I'm going to use is some golden olive SLF squirrel dub. And, uh, the original calls for an olive mixed with some like orange and yellow. The golden olive is already mixed and kind of gives you the same, close to the same color as the original. Close enough. We'll put it that way. I want to put a nice thin noodle on here, about three inches or so long, three, four inches. But I want to keep it thin because I don't want to build up too much. And then we're just going to go back to that gold. And we're just going to wrap it forward, keeping a nice thin body. 
nice and even and we're going to stop right there behind that eye about an eye length behind the eye and then we're going to wrap our gold tinsel make nice even wraps up there get about four four or five wraps and tie it off and now we cut that out of the way that step there wasn't necessary i just think it adds a nice little extra bit of flash and it's not going to hurt anything next thing this is some burnt orange brahma use march brown whatever color you can use regular any kind of brown hackle brown hand hackle works great here um, just taking a pinch of it off and i'm getting all those tips lined up the same length close to the same length there making a nice little clump of brown and then we're going to stick it underneath and I want these tips to go about to that hook point and I'm just going to pinch it right underneath I make one or two loose wraps and you see how it bend it up around the side on my of the hook there on my side so I'm just going to take get that back where I want it and then give a nice tug on it pulling it tight wrapping it back to get everything to lay where I want so I want this to go directly underneath the hook and then trim off the butt ends so there you can see it goes right underneath the hook where we want it gives a nice little collar now it's time for the wings and as I showed you in the opening segment there I'm gonna take the two sections of wings put the back sides together so the tips come together at the point and the butts come together at the point. And we're going to pinch that in our finger, get them so they match up really nice here. And we're just going to set it on top. I want the tip just to go right to the bend of the hook, right like that. And then I'm going to transfer it into my other hand. And I'm going to make a loose wrap. I'm going to pinch the thread in my finger. You can see here how it's just dangling out the front. Make a loose wrap. Pull it down loosely and then come in with another tight one and check make sure I have my length right and then wrap my thread up to where I want to make my head to there and then just twist now this is a fishing fly you can see I got a little bit of a crease there trout aren't going to care about that not on a fishing fly so I'm just going to come in Trim off the head sec the butt section of these. And then I'm going to go back to pinching those down, clean up my head, make a nice head on here. And that looks pretty good there. I like that. I'll play around a little bit. But now I'm just going to make a head with my whip finish. Oops. Run that around there a little bit. I'm gonna have to there we go. get it back where I want it. Trim off our thread, and what I like to do, you can see this side here, pretty nice on this side. I got that little crease there on this side. It's not gonna, it's not gonna affect the fishability of this fly. So what I like to do now is hit it with a little bit of UV glue. I'm gonna hit my thread, but I want this to stay going backwards, so I'm just going to just barely touch my feather wrap, that my feathers there. That holds them going back, nice, nice flow over the back there, and uh, get that cleaned up, and I like that a lot. So as a fishing fly, that's a great looking fishing fly there. It's not a presentation. I'm not going to mount that in a shadow box. It's not the perfect wing, but it's plenty fishable, so... There you go, a variation of the cow dung. All right, guys, I hope you like that pattern. Like I said, I'm trying to get better at tying wings on wet flies. It's something that I've struggled with for years, and I just don't do it. And I honestly, I stay away from winged wet flies, but I just need to take the time and practice. Um, you got buddies that hunt, have them save one of their mallards, cut the wings off. You got enough practice material for years probably um have fun tying guys that's what it's all about experiment learn new things all these things i teach you wings on this fly we'll use those wings on another fly i teach you 
how to put a tail on, we use that in other patterns. So what I always stress in my videos is learn techniques over learning patterns. If you learn techniques, you can stack those techniques on top of each other to create any pattern that you want to. So have fun and any of the material, like always guys, you can find it on our website at wholesingersflyshop.com. Um, if not, if we don't have it listed, if it's out of stock, we can try to order it in for you. We'll be more than happy to do that for you. And any of these patterns, if you see that you would like me to tie for you, I can also tie them for you. Just hit me up at wholesingersflyshop at gmail.com. So thanks for watching, guys. I enjoy bringing these videos to you. Till next week when I bring you another one, I'm Sean Holsinger.